The U.S. National Highway Transportation Safety Administration has opened an inv investigation into the first fatal crash involving a Tesla in autopilot mode. Joining us to talk about what this means is T Tim Stevens from CNET's Roadshow. Welcome, Tim. Thank you for having me. So you write that Tesla has confirmed that the crash took place when a tractor trailer drove across a highway ahead of a car. Uh, what else do we know about the accident? Yeah, we, we know a fair bit, but there's been a lot of speculation going around today, which has been pretty disappointing to see. But from what we can tell, uh, the tractor trailer did violate the, the basically the right of way of the Tesla. Uh, the, the gentleman who was killed, Joshua Brown, was driving in his Tesla with autopilot engaged. Uh, neither he nor the autopilot system or the Tesla auto braking system saw this tractor trailer pull across in front of the car. Uh, and so unfortunately, the, uh, the, the, there was a collision at a very high speed. The Model S actually went underneath the trailer because it was elevated, which effectively ripped the top of the car off, unfortunately, and that killed him pretty much instantly, which is pretty pretty tragic to say the least. Um, so uh, there's been, of course, a lot of inquiry about whether or not the Tesla system is at fault, um, but we have to remember that this is basically an assistant system. It's not an autonomous driving system. So, you know, Tesla always says that this is basically helping you out. It's not something that's meant for you to take your hands off the wheel by any means or not pay attention. Uh, and so ultimately, it's unfortunate that the system didn't detect the trailer, but uh, but ultimately also Mr. Brown himself didn't detect the trailer, which is also very unfortunate. So it's a combination of factors. And again, there's a, there was a statement that charges are pending against the driver of the tractor trailer for again indeed turning across uh, Joshua Brown's path. Well this is one of those things that we fully expected to happen eventually um, that there would be this back and forth about whose fault it was and that was going to be complicated and already you hear yeah. that like you said I mean there was uh, the, the driver of the tractor trailer said he, the driver was watching a movie while he was you know in the car but then you know I also read that all they did was find a portable DVD in the car, DVD player, uh, which lots of us have in the car. That doesn't mean we're watching movies. Yeah. Uh, you say you're disappointed. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that, about the discussion that's been going on? Right. The driver of the tractor trailer, as you mentioned, said that he thought that uh, Joshua Brown was watching a Harry Potter movie. But as it turns out, he actually didn't see any movie. He only heard a movie. And actually, Joshua Brown had posted videos online basically giving demonstrations of his Tesla. And in the background of all of those, you can hear audiobooks playing. And mm -hmm. I don't know that somebody on the outside would really be able to tell the difference between an audiobook playing and someone watching a movie. So I think that's the driver. You know, obviously, the tractor trailer driver is going to want to place the blame on somebody else. So it's pretty easy to see how he might make the conclusion that he was watching a movie. But uh, at no point does the tractor trailer driver say that he actually saw this movie playing. But yet, if you follow the, the evolution of headlines through the course of the day since that report came out, it started off as saying him hearing the movie. And now I've just seen reports saying that uh, Joshua Brown was watching a movie, despite the fact that there's been no new evidence discovered to state that. So it's been pretty disappointing to see the basically the conclusions that people are jumping to without having any new information. But as you mentioned, there was a portable DVD player found in the car um, but, you know, there's no reason to believe that wasn't in the back for uh, child entertainment, that kind of thing. And in an incident like this, something that was in the back seat could very well wind up in, in the front seat. It's, it's simply too early to know whether or not Joshua Brown was paying attention, whether or not he had his hands on the wheel, or indeed what he was doing when this incident occurred. It's, it's been pretty disappointing to me to see all the conclusions that a lot of outlets have been jumping to. Tim, quick question about the... Uh, how pervasive this type of uh, assistance is. Um, you know, what is the Tesla capable of doing in terms of driver assistance and how does that compare to any of the other driver assistance systems that are on the road? So autopilot is a very broad and unfortunately a pretty optimistic term for a series of systems that are ADAS systems, basically uh, advanced driver assistance systems. So the main thing that it will do is adjust speed on the highway. So if it detects a car ahead of you, it'll slow down. It'll slow down for speed limits as well. And it will turn itself around corners in very limited situations. But the car is always looking to make sure that you have your hands on the wheel. And if you take your hands off the wheel for too long, it'll prompt you to put your hands back on the wheel. Uh, again, to remind you that this is an assistance system. It's not an autonomous system. Uh, it's doing this by a series of ca uh, cameras that are mounted behind the rear view uh, mirror. There's also a, a simple radar scanner that's built into the front bumper of the car. And that's basically all that it has at this point. So it's a very limited vision system compared to something like the Google Autonomous Car, which has LiDAR scanners and radar scanners and a lot of more advanced sensors built in. Uh, so because of that, um, you know, its, it's sensing abilities are a little bit limited in that regard. And that's why it didn't see this trailer, which is unfortunate. But, uh, but again, this is meant to be an assistance system. Uh, so we are seeing other cars that have similar systems. Uh, the new Mercedes-Benz E-Class, for example, which is also available now, has very similar uh, 
technology that'll drive on the highway. It'll steer itself, do the same basic things. Uh, and Volvo also has technology coming very soon to its cars. So Tesla has been a little bit in, in the lead right there, but so we've got other cars coming very soon that will have similar functionality too. And, and of course, Google has their own self-driving car and they've, uh, they've been putting miles upon miles uh, on it with um, right. test drivers and, and people that they've, you know, people that work for them or people that they've hired to do this. Uh, whereas Tesla is sort of, you know, they're using the people that buy Teslas as their test subjects a little bit. Um, but what do you think about those two ways they're going at, at, at this self-driving car technology? Yeah, it's definitely a little bit, um, a little bit worrying. I think the notion that there's a safety feature in the car that's labeled as a beta, and I think that's what a lot of people are reacting very negatively to. You know, I think the, as you mentioned earlier, we've all believe that it's kind of inevitable that there's going to be a car crash involving this kind of system uh, that will lead to a fatality, and indeed it has finally come, unfortunately. Uh, but I think the the nature that people are relying on a feature that's called a beta, I think that's that's the problem, and the fact that Tesla's calling this autopilot, I think, is also a bit of a problem. It should be simply an assistant system, not the idea that this car is actually driving itself. But again, Tesla goes way out of its way every time you enable the system to warn you that this is not something that you can basically set and forget. You need to continue to pay attention. And even if it is a beta system, you should always be ready to take over. And I think that's what's what's been missing in a lot of the discussions about this, this unfortunate incident. There have been some statistics that have come out, uh, Tim, about the safety of driving with these assistive uh, technologies. Mm -hmm. And I know that one of those that came out is that 130 million miles have been covered by owners using autopilot in Models S and Models X. Uh, and this is the first fatality. And then folks comparing that to NHTSA data that shows that 94 million miles, every 94 million miles, there's a fatality with the rest of the cars on the road. Right. Do you you think that that's a good comparison and kind of a follow-up question to that uh you know where do other assistive technologies that have been on the road a long time fit in here like cruise control does that affect fatalities uh in terms of overall mileage I definitely think that that's a very important thing to keep in mind as we're having these discussions as well. Uh, we'll never know how many lives Autopilot has saved already, and, and I have to imagine that it probably has saved a few. And in fact, Joshua Brown himself has posted a video on YouTube in which Autopilot actually avoided a collision uh, when someone changed into his lane. Uh, you know, it's not known whether or not that collision would have occurred without the Autopilot system. But certainly there have been plenty of cases where that Autopilot has intervened and, and saved accidents from happening. Um, so I think that's going to be the big thing. You know, these systems, as they begin become more advanced are going to save lives. But when they save a life, it's not really going to get as much publicity as when unfortunately these systems fail to save a life. And that's what we've seen here. Uh, we, we definitely seen reports from NHTSA and from others um, that show that systems like autonomous braking and emergency braking and adaptive cruise control are saving lives and are actually drastically reducing the rate of forward collisions, which are very, very dangerous, of course, because they tend to be fairly high speed. Uh, so those systems are absolutely working and they're helping, um, but ultimately they're not bulletproof yet. And particularly when we're talking about autopilot, it's not 100%. Uh, so you still gotta be paying attention, but they are saving lives. And, and I think that's an important thing to remember. I know that I have that um, in my Honda in the minivan. It has the warning for uh, a car that's come to an abrupt stop in front of me mm -hmm. and that that technology is more pervasive than the particular situation in this accident where the truck turned across the path of the Tesla. Um, and it seems to me like part of this is exactly as you mentioned, that there's a misconception about the overall technology, that it's that it's a, a sort of a panacea and will be autonomous uh, instead of assistive. Um, how does that um, sort of, I know that the rear collision warning and rear collision taking over the braking, uh, how long has that been on the road? Is that pretty advanced? I mean, I don't need the specifics, but what's your perception of that compared to autonomous driving? Those systems have been available for probably almost a decade now, maybe even a little bit more, but they're only now starting to bubble down into the more attainable cars for the average consumer. And that's really encouraging to see. Definitely studies show that those are very, very effective in reducing collisions and saving a lot of lives. Uh, even more, you know, more important even than passive safety systems like more advanced roll cages and things like that. So it's great to see those spreading out into more and more cars. And I think that that's going to continue to, to, to expand, which is great. Um, but 
you know, the next step is trying to avoid some of these more more rare, but ultimately more dangerous crashes as well, like the one that we saw here when, you know, someone cuts across and, and violates your right away effectively. Um, this is a very difficult collision to prevent because you need to be looking on a very wide scale. You know, that tractor trailer came in from the side. It wasn't something that the system had identified. It wasn't being tracked because it simply wasn't within the field of view of the camera. Um, you need to have very long range scanners, very wide scanners in order to detect something like this. And again, that's why we see those laser scanners sitting on the top of the Google car and Ford's concept autonomous cars and the other autonomous cars because they're scanning in 360 degrees. And that's really what you need to be doing to have a fully autonomous car that can really fully drive itself. And since we're not there yet, again, it's up to the driver to be paying attention, to be looking at the size of the roads and for other things that are going to be jumping into your right of way. And, um, you know, we, we don't know, again, whether Joshua Brown was paying attention. Hopefully he was. Um, but ultimately, you know, you've got to be looking, uh, you know, got to keep your head on the swivel, as as uh, naval aviators say, to be lo looking for threats in all directions. And unfortunately, that, uh, that didn't happen either by the system or by the driver in this case. Well, Tim Stevens is editor-in-chief at CNET Roadshow and editor-at-large for CNET. He is Tim underscore Stevens on Twitter. Thank you so much for joining us, Tim. Thank you both. Take care.